Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Daily Word. It's Monday, February 1st, 2021. A snowy morning. I just read we might get another inch and a half of snow today. So if you're out running around, I hope you're being careful. Uh, we have amazingly enough started a new month in the year 2021. And it seems like the days fly by. And maybe they fly by because we are not doing as much, or maybe they're just flying by because of the circumstances we're in. I'm not sure about all that. But anyway, uh, it's a new month and a new day. And uh, we are ready to plow forward together and continue to write the story of 2021 and all the things that are important in our lives and how we want to live, um, at least for me, and I think, and I know for many others I've talked to in a different way, writing a different story about how it is that we live and how we share our lives together. And I think those are important things. So you can see behind me that I have put flame to my Christ candle. This Christ candle, that's a reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. We light it every day. We light it on Sunday morning as we begin our time of worship together. It's a reminder for me, and you know that I let mine burn. Um, it's a reminder for me that, of the presence of the Spirit that no matter where you are, you're never alone. And, you know, these days, um, because of our circumstances, which I understand, it's much more quiet around here. People don't stop in for coffee or chit-chat very often like they used to. And it's interesting, my coffee supply lasts a lot longer, but I'm also uh, finding myself being in a much more quiet place, which isn't necessarily a bad thing to be in a quiet place. So um, the Holy Spirit is a reminder through the burning of the candle, for me at least, that the presence of the Spirit is with us. So our scripture this morning, and we're going to talk about Ephesians for a couple of times this week, are... Our scripture for this morning is from Ephesians 1, verses 17 through 19. And it's Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And he says this, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Now, if you read that, there's a lot to unpack there. So I started reading it, and I thought about it last night as I read this, and, and I think one of the things, at least for me, one of the things that hinders me and keeps me from really understanding this scripture and having what it is that Paul calls us that he wants us to have is my own sense, and maybe you get this, my own sense that I already have this vast knowledge that I know about a lot of things, that I can interpret a lot of things. I don't mean, I don't mean um, dreams. I just mean understand things. Um, you know, my kids often say, you know, if we have trouble, if we want to know something, if we have difficulty in life, their first response is, let's just go ask dad. And I think that's a really cool thing that, that they do that. But it's also an interesting challenge because they also have this idea that I know a lot of things. Now, knowledge is a great thing. You know, knowledge is a great thing as we, as we try to live our lives and navigate certain things. Now, there are things I don't know about and I'm not very good at. Knowledge, though, can sometimes hinder us from knowing who God is and knowing what it is that God might be calling us to. So Paul says to us at the very beginning of this that he prays that God will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we might know God better. We might have this, this understanding, this deeper understanding of who God is. And Paul says that, you know, he prays for us to have the, eye, uh, the eyes of our heart opened. You know, there's a famous song, you know, we often sing it in church, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, I want to see you. Sometimes, you know, 
we get stuck because we think we have knowledge. We think we know a lot of things and our eyes are jaded. I, I was talking to someone yesterday about Carter and Carter, who has spent a lot of time with me, my grandson, spent a lot of time with me here at church. And he's always fascinated when we go down the hallway by the rose window at the clear at the front of a sanctuary. And he just stares at that and stares at that and stares at that. And even when I call his name and tell him, come on, Papa's going to leave you, he just stands and stares at it. And when he's in the sanctuary, um, if, we're, if they're here for church, when we have church in person, he, he's fascinated by that window. And I've said out loud, as Carter finally turns and comes with me, and I look at that rose window and I try to see what he sees. And I've said, okay, God, this isn't fair. If he can see you or sees something I can't see, that's really unfair. Well, the problem is that Carter, you see, because he's three and, and younger than that, he doesn't have jaded eyes. He doesn't have all this knowledge that we all think we have. His, the eyes of his heart are opened to whatever it is that he could learn and grab a hold of and, and all the new words that he says. I think that's what we miss in our journey in life as it comes to being Christian. You know, we think we have it all figured out and that we can, we've seen all that we can see. But Paul says, God needs to give us a spirit of wisdom, of knowledge and learning that God should open the eyes of our hearts to know the hope which God has called us to. Isn't that interesting? To know the hope, to know the riches of the glorious inheritance of his people, the scripture says, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. So I was thinking this morning as I was driving here and the streets are a little slippery, and taking my time and coming up West Avenue Hill and thinking about all these things. You know, the best we can do in life sometimes is have our eyes opened to, to know that we haven't learned everything that we need to learn. That this God who continues to speak to us and teach us and help us to learn, this God who, who in another word, gives us faith, you know, that we can learn and grab a hold of and figure out who God is. And I got to thinking about that in, in thinking about what we do together every day. And when we worship on a Sunday morning, I was at a basketball game the other night and we don't make announcements <clears throat> during the JV game. And, and so for boys games, I keep the book, I do the announcing, I play the music, I do the possession arrow, I have the referees sign for their checks. I, I do all these multitasking things. And so JV referee came over. His name's Dave. I've known him for a while. He comes over and he says, so any announcements? I said, no. Nope. Any introductions? No. Nope. He said a couple of things. He said, are we going to pray? I said, well, we could pray. He said, I said, I have a lot of experience. And he looked at me right away and said, are you a pastor? And I said, yeah. And we talked a little bit about that. And in thinking about that, you know, there is this reminder, as Paul gives to us, that we have so much to learn and so much to teach each other. And it's not just here, it's not just on Sunday morning, but it's how we live our lives in a constant kind of way. And the love that we're called to share, you know, it's called agape love, the love that is above all loves, the love of all loves. And so hear these words again. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the glorious riches of the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who to believe. Goodness, there's so much there. 
that Paul says, knowledge and knowing who God is, having our eyes opened to new things, I think for us is the way that we indeed write a new story. And that we indeed find ourselves enriched in our daily walk of life. And so maybe that's something for you and I to consider today. Um, to have our eyes opened a little clearer. Uh, to learn something new and not just think we have all the knowledge in the world. And most importantly, to love in such a way that we make a difference in the world. So I pray you'll have a great day. I pray that this word is enough for us today, enough for you and enough for me that we might know the glorious presence of God in our lives. Be safe today. Know of God's love in your life. Know of the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. And know of my love for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.